a wrong way to or motivating Christians to grow. Uh, sometimes people would just say, Jesus has died for you, you have received grace. After that, you have to or must grow. Um, now, I have asked some people to write assignments for me, uh, t- for you to grow, to write assignments of, um, of sermons. And then what they wrote was, it's, you know, that God died, uh, Jesus died for you, and then you have to do this, you must do this, and it's all telling people what to do. Now, it's not wrong to tell people what to do, but as I said, the Bible motivates us with God's grace. The Bible motivates us with God's grace. So it's very important that we do the same thing as in the Bible, and also to ourselves, not just when we are teaching, but when we are motivating ourselves, that we are not just telling people what uh, they have to do or what we have to do. Okay, so people will say, you have to, uh, you have to read the Bible, you have to pray, you have to obey, you have to do evangelism, you have to love God, you have to serve God. Now, all these are true. And they also use the word have to. Now, it's, a, it's true in a sense that we have to. But when we motivate people like that, it has negative influence. Uh, let me explain uh, what I mean. For instance, in a family relationship, in a marriage relationship, if the husband and wife, they always tell each other, you have to do this, you have to wash the dishes, you have to uh, clean the house, you have to bring me money, and all this is just you have to, you must. Then the other person will feel very, uh, will feel under pressure. So it's like, I have to do this, I have to do that. That is not, you know, the way in a loving relationship or the way in the Bible. The Bible does tell us what to do, but the Bible does tell us God's motivation. And I'm going to explain this uh, in a short time, okay? And also, sometimes people will say, if you don't do these things, God will punish you and you will suffer. Now, it's true, too. It's true. But then, this is motivation by by criticism, by negative, this is negative motivation. Uh, even though it's true, our main motivation should not be that, you know, if we do, do, do not obey God, then immediately God will punish us. Now, it, it is true in a way, but if we say this, then people would feel under pressure. Uh, they don't, they, they're not serving God out of love. They're not living under love. Let me use an uh, uh, illustration again. It's like in a, you know, in a family that the couple just say to each other, now if you don't obey me, if you don't do these things, then we can have a divorce. Now that is very negative motivation. Uh, it's, or, or if you don't do this, uh, then I won't like you anymore. Then I won't like you anymore. That is, again, is negative motivation. I'm going to explain very uh, shortly how to motivate people positive, positively. Okay. The biblical way of motivating Christians to grow. Okay. God's grace for us. What God does to accept us, love us, bless us, help us, strengthen us, reward us. Now, God works in our life all the time. He's a wonderful God. He, you know, he does a lot of things to accept us by his, the presence of the Holy Spirit, by motivating us with the Holy Spirit. He accepts us. He loves us. He blesses us. He helps us, strengthens us, and rewards us, rewards us. All the time, he does all kinds of good things in our life, all the time. So that is God's grace for us. And God's grace includes His salvation, His love for us, His acceptance for us, and a wonderful plan in our lives. Uh, you know, he, he saves us. Jesus died for us. He loves us very much. He accepts us as we are, even though when we are weak, He still 
accepts us. He has a wonderful plan in our lives that He plans wonderful things for our lives, and He draw us to believe in Him through the work of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit works in our heart to draw us to believe in Jesus, and also with God's word. And the Holy Spirit continues to work in our lives, even when we disobey Him. That the Holy Spirit still continues to work in our life, and the more we obey Him, the more the Holy Spirit will work in our life. And He protects us. He prepares wonderful things in all areas of our lives to bless us, and He provides for us. He He gives provision for us so that we have our needs, so that we have. What we need to serve God, and He raised our lives to higher levels. That He raised our lives to a higher level that we can be used by God more, and He trained our lives, and He provide opportunities for us to serve Him. He give us opportunities, and to so that we can bless other people, and He remember our good deeds, and He rewards us, and He gives us heaven. And so on. So he does all these good things. So if we think about it, God works in our lives every day, all the time. God works in our lives all the time. He changes our life all the time. He motivates us all the time. He works in our life all the time. So that is the, the wonderful work of God. He works in our life all the time. He doesn't just leave us there to let us. You know,、uh, work out our salvation, but he works in our life. He、uh, he does wonderful things in our life every day, so that we'll be motivated by him, and、uh, he changes our life so that we are attracted to obey him. Now, the work of God in our lives is much stronger than the work of our spouse. Now, our spouse, if、uh, our spouse is a good person. Uh, she would do great things, good things in our lives. But compared to God, is really, really small. What God does in our life is continuous and is in every area of our life. So when we think about it, we say, "Wow, God, you are so wonderful." So I hope we all motivate people with God's grace and tell them how much God has worked in our life, how much God has blessed us. Uh, what God is doing in our lives, and then when we talk about grace, it's not just about salvation. Now, some people, when they do the assignment, they just wrote、uh, that God gave us the salvation. It's not just salvation. For every area of our Christian life, God works in that particular way to help us to grow in that particular way. Okay, I'm going to show you in a short time. Okay. So here, God's way of motivating us. The Bible does does not just tell us what to do. The Bible just doesn't just tell us obey God and trust in Him. Don't worry. He give us the reason from God's grace. The Bible tells us the many things God has done to save us and revive our spiritual life and bless us richly so that we can grow and obey. So whatever. God tell us to do. Very often, He will tell us His grace to motivate us. What He does to make it possible for us to obey Him. And the Bible tells us how He is pleased to see us follow and obey Him, and He re- will provide for us and reward us richly when we obey Him. So the Bible tells us how He is pleased to s- to see us obey and follow and. Obey him. That the Bible tells us that when we give a cup of water to those who belong to Christ, that we will by no means lose the reward. And whatever we we do to the little ones, we are doing to Christ. So the Bible is telling us that God is pleased with every little thing we do to obey Him. Whatever we do to obey Him, God is very happy, and God will reward us. God will strengthen us. So. In every area of our Christian life, God motivate us like that, and so I hope we all motivate ourselves like that. That God is blessing me now, God is helping me now. 
This way, people have more motivation to obey God. This way, we will be more motivated to obey God, to love God. When we know that God is working in our lives all the time, and I use the illustration again in a marriage, if you find that your spouse is always nice to you, is always doing good things for you, then you'll be more motivated to love her. Then you'll be more motivated to treasure her and to do good, do good things to her so that she will enjoy being with you. So if we uh, have a sense of treasuring our marriage, that we want our marriage to be better, then we want to think of all the good things our spouse has done for us and how she is nice to us, and then we will treat her nicely. And with God, he, what He does to us is so numerous and so great. And it's in every little detail that He is blessing us. So we should all be thanking God and loving God and appreciating God and respond to Him and obey Him. And whenever we respond to Him, God is very happy and He will reward us and He will give us more strength and more opportunities to bless other people and to serve God. And God will reward us greatly. So when we think about that, we should have a stronger motivation to serve God. Now for myself, I'm greatly motivated to serve God all the time. I, all the time, I'm, you know, I, I'm willing to serve God, to love God. I want to do as much as I can because I know that God is a good God. God is very, very good. He does good things to us all the time. God is also very powerful. He's capable of doing any great things in our life. He's capable of overcoming any difficulties we are facing. And actually, all the difficulties are under His hand. With Him, is, nothing is impossible. He can remove the difficulties. Sometimes the difficulties will help us to trust in Him more. He doesn't remove some difficulties immediately because, so that we can learn to trust in Him. And when we trust in Him, He would not allow the difficulties to stop our life from growing. He will continue to bless us so that the difficulties are all, <coughs> all for our good. It will do great things for our lives. So I hope that we all see that and we all appreciate God greatly. Okay, and then the third point here is God is full of love and power. His blessings are abundant in every area for those who love Him. So He is full of love and power. He is capable of doing any great thing for us. He is capable of blessing us in any way. He is capable of raising our life up to a very high level. So He is full of love and He is full of power. And His blessings are abundant in every area for those who love Him. When we love Him, His grace is abundant. His, it's uh, full of grace. Okay, so I hope you all can see that wow, God is so wonderful. God is so full of grace. And whenever we do, uh, we obey Him. He's very happy and He'll bless us. And He has been working in our lives so many times, all the time. So we'll appreciate Him. Then when we talk, we don't just tell people, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to obey, you have to uh, turn away from your sin. We don't to say, uh, talk to people like that. Now, we will tell people to turn away from sins. We'll, this is the, how we will say it. God wants to bless your life, and your life can go higher and higher, and the sin will stop, uh, you know, can block our relationship with God and stop the blessings from God. So when we sin, we can stop the blessings flowing to us. And when we turn away from our sins and repent and trust in God, for uh, forgiveness and we obey Him in every way, God is very happy and He will respond. So it is really profitable for us to turn away from our sins and obey Him in every way. And God will be very, very happy. Now this is the way to motivate people with God's grace. Instead of telling them, you have to obey. If not, God will punish you. If not, you will not be blessed by God. Now, I've seen so many bless, uh, so many assignments uh, of some pastors is always just telling people what to do without telling them the promises of God. So we need to learn to 
pay attention to the promises of God in every area of our life. Okay, and we'll talk more about those promises. So God's way of motivating us. The Bible does give us warnings now. The Bible gives us a lot of promises, but it also gives us warnings. The warnings are mainly for people who disobey. The Bible does not motivate us mainly with warning. Now, the, Jesus did warn the Pharisees in the uh, seven letters to the seven churches in the book of Revelation. Jesus did warn the Christians who don't obey Him. And you notice that in the seven letters, for those Christians who obey Him, Jesus was praising them. Jesus was saying things, you know, you will receive these promises, you will have victory, and you will re inherit these blessings from Me. So, for those Christians who are obeying Him, He's not using warnings. Now, even though we should have the warning, in our heart, the main motivation should be from God. God's grace and the warning should be a small part in our lives. Okay, let me use an illustration. For instance, for me to serve God, I'm motivated to serve God because I see that God is full of blessings, God is full of grace, God is blessing our lives, God has a wonderful plan in my life and, and He motivates me to obey Him and whenever I ob obey Him and praise Him and worship Him, I will have joy coming to me. I have I experienced the joy of God. I experienced the help from God. So I appreciate God and I know that the more I obey Him, the more I'll be blessed by God. So I, I'm always motivating myself with God's grace and I'm motivating people with God's grace. Now for me, there is the warning. I know that if I disobey Him, if I sin, there are consequences that Jesus said to the man who was healed of 38 years of sickness. He said that sin no more, lest the worst thing will happen to you. If he continue to sin, the worst thing can happen to him. He can, the sickness can come back to him again, and then he could have other problems. But if we continue to love God and obey God, he will experience all kinds of blessings in his whole life. So that should be the main motivation. So for myself, I'm not saying, oh, if I disobey Him, I'll be punished by Him. I know this, but that is not my main motivation. It's just a small reminder in my mind. Now for Christians who are lazy, who think that they can run away from God, they can escape the eyes of God, then the warning should be put on them, that they should be warned if they continue to sin, there will be serious consequences. They can never run away from God. But Christians should not be like this. So we should motivate people and tell them, God loves you so much. God has a wonderful plan in your life. God wants to do great things in your life. And God is capable of doing great things in your life. Do you want blessings to come in your life? Do you want your life to go higher and higher? Do you want your life to be full of blessings and full of strength and full of all kinds of uh, good things from God that you enjoy your life and, and other people around you will see God's work in your life and they'll all say, wow, this is a wonderful Christian. So Christians should see the goodness of God. So I hope that we all are full of the blessings of God. The, full of the promises of God, that God has promised us so many ways. We'll go through some of these promises later. That God has promised us so many ways that actually we, you look at many Bible verses, you can see many promises. So when you remember all these promises, then you know how to motivate people with God's promises. And also we need to learn to dig out the promises in different Bible verses. For instance, Jesus said, He who abides in me, I will abide in him, and he will bear much fruit. Now, this contains two promises. What are the two promises? First, if we abide in him, he will abide in us. So that's the first thing. He will not forsake us. He will stay with us. When we abide in him, when we pray to him, when we love him, when we worship him, 
He will always stay in our lives. He will continue work in our lives. And the second, that's the sec- first promise. And the second promise is that then His presence will help us to bear fruit. So we'll bear much fruit for those who abide in Him. He will abide in Him and then Jesus will cause Him to bear much fruit. So that is, those are two promises. When we abide in Him, He'll always stay in us. He will always work in our life. Now this is the hidden, hidden message there. It doesn't say that clear, uh, say that out, uh, outwardly. But even when it doesn't say it outwardly, we can read the whole Bible. We know that it is God who works in us so that, you know, for, those, for us to will and to act and to do the will of God, it's God who is working in us. And God is operating in our life with the power <coughs> of the Holy Spirit that we will be, uh, will receive the power of the, resur- the resurrection of Jesus Christ. As just as God has caused Jesus to rise from the dead, He will cause us to have this resurrection power in us. So Jesus has promised us that the things I've done you will do also, and greater things you, you will, will you do. So this is a promise that when we abide in Him, when we have a good relationship with Him and obey Him, then we can do the things He has done, and even we can do greater things than Jesus when He did on earth, not when He's in heaven. Now, we're not doing better things. Jesus never said we can do better things. We can never do better things. But we can do greater things. That is why there are evangelists who have meetings of a million people. Jesus did not have a million people in a meeting. Now we have the sound system and we have the TV system. We have the radio system that we can reach out to millions and millions of people with our radio message, with our TV message, and with our WhatsApp and YouTube messages. So now we can do greater things, but not better things than Jesus. So here Jesus promises that He will enable us to do greater things than what He did when He was on earth. So that was very humble of Jesus to say that, that Jesus is promising us that, that He can cause us to do great things. So we should remember all these promises. Now I, when I read the Bible, I pay attention to the promises, so I remember it all the time. I remember the promises all the time so I know what God would do, how He would respond to me when I trust in Him and love Him and obey Him. I know what He would do. So I'm greatly motivated to serve God and obey Him. And I don't need to say to myself, oh, uh, God will punish you, Uh, God will punish me if I don't obey Him. Because that is a reminder, a small reminder. now, for those people who continue to sin, it should be a greater reminder. But for those who love Him, we should be motivated mainly by the, God's grace. And when we preach the messages, we should be telling people how wonderful God is. Instead, many, Chris, many Christians and even preachers just tell people what you have to do, what you must do. Now, that is just pushing people to do things. It's like in a family. If the wife is always telling the husband, you have to wash the dishes, you have to help me, you have to give me money, you have to do this, it's always saying those things. It it could uh, create a negative effect. But if the wife always says, I love you, I like you, and when you do these things, I'm very happy. I'm happy to be with you. I enjoy being with you. So if the wife motivates the husband like that, the husband is more motivated to be nice to her, to be kind to her, and do good things to her. Instead of, uh, instead of the wife saying, oh, if you don't do this, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to walk away. You know, that is a negative motivation. And we should be motivated mainly by, by uh, the grace of God, even though there are warnings. But the warnings should be the small part of the reminder of us. Okay, five, if we disobey God in any way, we give footholds to the devil and we will lose blessings from God. So this is the warning. If we disobey God in any way, 
we good foot we give footholds to the devil that the devil can attack us and we will lose blessings from God so we understand this if we sin so for people who continue to sin now the motivation should be like this for them to turn away from the sin we should say if you obey God if you respect God God will be very happy and he will pour blessings into your life and you know some people just stay in lust or adultery if they stay in lust and adultery it's going to ruin their life but if they respect God and honor God and obey God and live a holy life then God is happy with them and God will provide a good family for him or a good single life you know not all Christians are married but even if we're not married that we can have a good single life that we can serve God as a single person so we can motivate people and say if you love God and you know be, live a holy life then God will give you a good marriage or a good single life but if you live in lust or adultery it's going to destroy you you will stop the blessings of God and you, even if you get married the marriage will not be a good marriage so that is a reminder of the law so we should it should not be the main motivation so I hope that we all understand that the main motivation should be from God's grace and we should remember God's grace very clearly and we remember many promises in the Bible we know that what we do how, when, whenever we obey God God will do great things in our life okay so we should be motivated mainly by God's love and almighty power that he can bless us in every way so we should be motivated by his love and his power that he will bless us he is capable of blessing us then we want to obey God seven when we sincerely love God and sincerely want to glorify God and bless others God is very, very pleased with us and will put us into his wonderful plan that should be our motivation so when we follow God totally we sincerely love him and sincerely want to glorify him and bless other people then God is very pleased with us and he, he will put us into his wonderful plan God has a wonderful plan for each one of us all the days of our life have been written in his book and uh, this is in Psalm 139 verse 16 and 17 you know oh how precious are your thoughts O God that in your book you have written your precious thoughts you have many precious thoughts for us that you put all these precious thoughts into your book into the plan so if we offer a body as a living sacrifice in Romans 12 1 to 2 and do not be conformed to the world but be transformed by the renewal of our mind then we will discern the good and perfect and pleasing will of God then we can enter this good and pleasing and perfect will of God when we obey God and serve God and love God and so God has a wonderful plan for each single person every single Christian can enter God's wonderful plan every one of us can enter this wonderful plan and our life can go higher and higher will our life will go higher and higher that we will be blessed by God when we enter his perfect plan so the best thing that can happen to us is when we obey him and enter his perfect plan so I hope we all say yes I want to enter God's perfect plan I want to enter his wonderful plan number eight if a person just wants to take advantage of God and disregard God's plan and live in sins he can lose everything in his life his relationship with God his family his reputation and his provision this is negative motivation or warning so if a person wants to take advantage of God just want to receive blessings from God or just want salvation and disregard God's plan and live in sins he can lose everything because Satan will come and steal, kill, and destroy his life. And then uh, he will lose his relationship with God. He will lose his family. His family will go into ruin. He, he, he will lose his reputation and his provision. So this is negative motivation or warning. We should still tell people this, but it should be the, not the main point. The main point should be God's grace to motivate people okay now there is the 
the law of God. Now, the law I mean is uh, the commandment of God. Because some people, when they uh, read what I said, they thought what I mean, God's grace is just salvation. Let me say to you that God's grace is not just salvation. Salvation is one part of God's grace. His blessing for us in every area of our life. Uh, how He blesses us. He has a wonderful plan. All these are His grace. His grace is not just salvation. It's His grace is in every area of our life. And then uh, the law means His commandment. To love God, to obey God, all these are His commandment. Whatever God tells us to do. So the commandment of God's law are to love God, to worship Him, to obey Him, to submit to Him, to glorify Him, to delight in Him, <coughs> and to live out. So the first part is what we do to God, that we worship God and de- obey God and submit to God and glorify God and delight in God. And then our, uh, the spiritual f- fruit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, to live out God's love, His joy, His peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, humility, holiness, and to stop any sin. So that is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And then our action to other people, to love others, to help others, to accept others, to be kind to them, to preach the gospel to them, to help them spiritually, to pray for them, to forgive them, to build them up, not to hurt them, to guide them, and strengthen them. So this is, this is the law of God. Now the law of God also contains warning. The Bible does tell us that. Cursed is him who doesn't love the Lord. So the Bible does tell us. Those who don't obey God is like building on sand. And when the, the rain, you know, the water and the wind comes, then the, the house will be blown down. So the Bible does give us warning. If we disobey Him, what will happen? The worst thing will happen to you if you continue to sin. And he who sows to the flesh will from the flesh reap destruction. So the Bible does have that. That's the warning part of the law. Now this is the what we should obey. Now I have learned to mark my Bible in this way. I've done it for years. And so now whenever I read any Bible passage or when I hear anybody talking, I can tell whether he is saying God's grace or God's law or whether he is warning people uh, uh, or whether he is telling people what to obey. Now the three colors are first red color. Red color is like the blood of Jesus that, that, that will represent the grace of God. So whenever it's God doing something good for us, he blesses us, he gives us strength, he, he helps us. He remembers our good deeds and He rewards us. Those are marked in red. And the power of the Holy Spirit, that's marked in red. And then uh, in green would be uh, God's law, to love God, to obey Him, to worship Him, to preach the gospel. And then blue would be the opposite of grace, is the warning, the punishment of God, and the uh, consequences, the consequences of sin. And then God will be away from them. That is the consequence of sin. Or God will punish them and discipline them. And they could lose salvation. That is is, uh, blue. And then the worst part is hell. Hell is also in in blue. So I'm marked with this highlighter. And then when I hear people preach, I hear them saying, okay, you have to obey. I know that that is the law telling people what to do and is he's teaching the law in a heavy way he's saying you have to do this now when I do it I will say when you love God God is very happy when well, I use the word when okay instead of have to when you love God God is very happy with you and he'll bless you now here I have the law when you love God that is the law God is very happy with you that is God's grace and He'll reward you. That is grace. So I always will say the law of God in a gentle way. Now, if a person continues sin and doesn't 
repent, I will warn them. But it doesn't mean I have to yell at them. I can, you know, I can say in a gentle way, like, if you continue sin, you can lose your salvation. Now, this is heavy. But I say in a gentle tone. Now, if I want to say in a heavy, heavy way, I say, I have warned you a number of times. God is warning you. When you continue sin, the consequence, consequence is very serious. You can lose salvation. And God can punish you right now. So that is heavier. But I still don't have to yell at them. I don't have to use heavy language. I can just use, you know, I explain to them what will happen if they don't obey God. So, I, you know, I know what to do. Immediately I know how to motivate people with God's grace, how to motivate people with, you know, that with God's power, God is helping you. He has the power to help you in every way. So I hope you all understand this. I have taught this uh, to a number of people and it seems very hard for them to learn. The reason why if, is because most people grow up under the law. It's always hearing people saying, oh, you didn't do so well, you have to do this, you have to do that. It's always telling them what to do. When they come to the church, they should be hearing the grace of God, but very often they just go to the, uh, you know, it's warning again. It's saying, okay, uh, if you don't obey, God will punish you. So because they are used to that kind of warning language, they're used to uh, the language of warning and the law. They're used to that. So whenever they talk, it's always the law instead of grace. And when people talk about grace, they just talk about Jesus dying for us. That's only one area the main, most important area, but then He has done many other things. God continued to work in our life. God continued to work in our life and bless us. All this is God's grace. So I hope you all can see God's blessings and then we can always motivate people with God's grace and we ourselves too. We